Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the podcast series. Today, we're going to be with Richard Newsom. Richard's with the Newsom Mountain Law Firm located in Orlando, Florida. He's a graduate of the University of Florida Law School, uh, actually the Fred Levin School of Law at the University of Florida. He then uh, was a United States attorney in Florida in the middle and northern districts. He then went to work in a large defense product liability firm. Was that the Rumbauer firm? Well, it was a Rumberger spinoff. It was called Cabinus Burke at the time. Oh, yeah. John, uh, I know Cabinus. Yeah, Ron and Cabinus. Ron is an excellent. He did a lot of forward work. So he got to work a lot of uh, product liability. He then switched sides and became a plaintiff lawyer. He served as the uh, president of the Florida Justice Association. He's been very involved with the Jerry Spence College. He's get, created his own trial college that we're going to talk about. He's won numerous awards. And last year had two of the top 100 verdicts in the United States learning are using some of these principles that he's learned and taught over the years. We're going to get into those. So welcome, Rich. And I, I understand today is your birthday. So happy birthday. Well, thank you. And it's uh, great to be here today. Rich, what are your favorite things about being a plaintiff lawyer? Oh, boy. I think it's that... Uh that that call you know, like days like today when i got a call from an old client just thanking you for for helping them you know this is a guy that calls me every year on my birthday 20 years later and uh you know when you when you're when you're on your deathbed hopefully you look back and you've you've helped some people meaningfully like that and uh to me that's that's just what makes it all worthwhile all the hours and all the sweat you know that, that comes home when you get a call like that or somebody thanking you for something you did years ago you know, that, that's really incredible, you know, about uh, 20, let's see, I can't even remember, 30 years ago when I won my first case, I had a great client from that case, and he would call me every year on my birthday until he passed away, and he'd also would call on my anniversary as he was at my wedding. So it is that great bond you build with the clients that kind of makes it all worthwhile at the end of the day. So, Rich... List, I want to talk about uh, the FJA, the Florida Justice Association. I know you've been very involved in it. Talk about why is it important for lawyers, particularly plaintiff lawyers, to be involved in and participating in organizations like the Florida Justice Association? Well, you know, it's funny. There was a crossroads that happened around the same time in Texas and Florida. Um, and it was a political crossroads that happened at the state legislatures where this is back in the days when the U.S. Chamber was coming hard with all their PR machine and really trying to, you know, implement so-called tort reform. And in Texas, there was this red tide that came in. You remember it. Y'all were involved uh, to some degree out in California, but where all of a sudden the chamber were sharpening their knives and ready to go and, uh, you know, I saw this happen in Texas and we had it in Florida, obviously. And, uh, you know, we played it a little bit differently in, in Florida than they did in Texas, but you can look at what happened to Texas and the complete evisceration of medical malpractice and workers' compensation and just basic laws that protect regular people. Uh, and, and what can happen when it goes south and when it goes badly, like happened in, uh, in, in Texas. And so here in Florida, we have been able to at least so far keep our finger in the dike. Uh, we still have the battle that we fight. We have a Republican supermajority in both the House and the Senate, also in the uh, you know, Republican governor. But uh, because of the Florida Justice Association, because of all the, the, the men and women around Florida who, who are trial lawyers, who, who bend the oars together, we've so far been able to keep it afloat, keep it where we have reasonable laws. Now, obviously, we've taken our hits. But reasonable laws that that allow regular people to have their day in court, and that's why it's important. And and that's really important to everybody and to all of our clients. But also another part of the organization is the training and the seminars and the sharing of information by the top lawyers that participate. Why is that important for young lawyers to get involved, and how can that help them with their skills and their practice? You know, so like a lot of us have come from the defense practice or maybe uh, the criminal defense side or pr as a prosecutor, or even a young lawyer, and they teach you one thing in law school. As Jerry Spence always says, the, the law schools are bullshit. They just don't teach you how to care for and tell these clients stories before a jury. 
And so the local trial lawyers have served this amazing function where they teach lawyers who represent people how to, to, to navigate all the bomb, the, the, the minefields that there are, uh, and, and to be able to tell the story. And that's a very different skill set that's taught at, for example, the Florida Justice Association, California Consumer Lawyers, or wherever it may be. That's a very different skill set than you're going to learn in law school. You're going to learn it going to sort of the generic training that something like NIDA provides. And so, yeah, I mean, it's been a, a great function that, that the FJA and all the other TLAs have served. Same, same with AAJ. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Let's talk about you. You bring up the, the Jerry Spence Trial College in Wyoming. I've never had the privilege of attending. I know many lawyers who have. They, every one of them that I've spoken to uh, calls it a watershed moment in their life, not only their career, but their life. And obviously, it's something that's been important to you. So let, let's just talk a little bit about the Spence College and how then you were able to take what you learned there plus other things and move it into what you're doing. But let, let's first of all give our listeners some idea about the Spence College, how it works and what's done there. So Spence College is a three-week thing where you go out and you really, as they say, you work on the horse, which is you work on yourself. And I was skeptical. I mean, I you know, tried a lot of cases. And a friend of mine named Mel Orchard, who's actually the new managing partner of the Spence Law Firm out in, in uh, Jackson, Wyoming, bent my arm and guilted me into going. And I kind of, I wanted to learn a little bit more about how they approach jury selection because I use what I call the Florida method, which was taught by a guy named Jay Burke at Keith Mitnick, your friend, who's a great friend of mine as well, has really honed. But where it's focused on executing or trying to develop challenges for cause. So I'd, I'd got my ass beat up in the panhandle in a paraplegic product case and it just broke my heart for the client. I was kind of blaming myself and was kind of feeling disconnected that, with the jury. And so I went out there and and they taught, Brian, it was unbelievable. They taught a completely different approach than we had. I'd heard, you know, bits and pieces about it. But when, when I was there, it's this tribe building approach that you know, is all about being honest with the jury and showing the problems in your case. But the, 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 the fork in the road was then what they do with it. You know, here in Florida, we try to take that and turn it into a challenge for cause to basically get a juror to say that, hey, look, I can't be fair. But in in Wyoming, they were teaching this method where they're trying to build a tribe to get the jury to basically coalesce with each other and agree to keep an open mind and agree. And it was just so, it seemed so wrongheaded to me. Uh, but when I saw it in action, when I, they make you practice it and actually try it out there, 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 it felt to me that there was some real value to it. And so uh, we, uh, that's, that was, that was sort of my first introduction to it. And uh, obviously, have kind of tried to use it and combine it with with what we do here in Florida, and it's been I think it's it's been successful. I think. Well, I know the Spence College, you have to actually fill out an application and apply, and not everyone gets accepted. Is that right? Yeah, it is. I mean, they they're very um, very careful to only have lawyers who attend who represent human beings. So if you represent a corporation, even as or someone else in your firm does. Or, or you're a prosecutor, none, none of the bad guys are involved or are allowed to come. And they really try to vet it carefully. And it's kind of a mix of both uh, civil plaintiff lawyers and criminal defense lawyers. So now, after you complete that three weeks, you then have become an instructor. I assume you did that shortly after you, you finished? Well, they, I got invited to be on the faculty, have not had, due to, unfortunately, due to some trial conflicts and, uh, and, and schedules here uh, at, my, at my firm. I have not, I'm actually not on the faculty uh, yet. You have to go through a real intensive uh, faculty training course, and I, I haven't had a chance to do that okay. yet. But, but um, yeah, I'm hoping to have a chance to do it this year. Um, but, um, but, yeah, we got together. I, I think I was, I had mentioned this um, to you right before we got on the, the podcast, but but a group of us got together here in Florida and held a workshop. We actually brought some of the senior faculty members. Uh, I think Mel Orchard came down for it. We had uh, John Zelps, Joey Lowe, and then we had some of the Florida guys like Mitnick uh, and some of the other, uh, some really great Florida trial lawyers. Alex Alvarez was there 
And we did have a workshop where we tried to mash up the two methods and try to find what we called the, a way to mix the two together. Or mix so what were you, you're mixing the trial lawyer college, build a tribe methodology, so to speak, mm -hmm. with what? Well, with the, what we do here in Florida. You know, which I, is trying to get everyone for causes, which I do. That's exactly <laughs> right. Trying to get all the people that I think are terrible and they can never vote for the plaintiff. I want to try to get them off and then hope the rest of them have an open mind. I guess I approach it differently, but I think we're trying to get the same result. Well, that's exactly right. I was actually, I came back, it started over a lunch with Mitnick, and I was telling about, man, they, at Spence, they do this tribe building thing. It's very different. He looked at me and shook his head and said, that's bullshit. That won't work. And I was talking to uh, Joey Lowe, one of the faculty members. So I was talking to Mitnick and, you know, he you know, kind of called, you know, same as me, had a lot of skepticism about whether it'd work. And Lowe said, this, ah, it's bullshit. And so I said, well, why don't we get everybody together in a room and, and, and mash it up? And so we held two days of focus groups and everybody kind of got to see the other side. And it was really an eye-opening experience. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. So did you get involved with the reptile at all? That, that, uh, source of uh, that theory the reptile reptilian brain of keenan and ball you know i i've never uh i I've, i think i watched one of don's dvds one time i've never been to any of his seminars but obviously there's a lot of value to that and i think there's a lot of crossover between what uh what don keenan teaches and what we do here in florida i think he calls it identifying the rats you know, and then there, are, then there are other methods too. There's this Colorado method, which is really designed for the death penalty cases out there in, um, in Colorado that was incredibly powerful. There was uh, the, um, you know, the, the sort of the communications that Josh Carden teaches. Carden's a, a drama uh, yeah. actually, he's a producer. He's, he's good. Yeah, so if you combine all those together, and there was actually just something recently. I don't know if you know Jim Purdue Jr. He's a yes. great lawyer in, in, in Texas, but uh, Jim actually, uh, there's a, a former member of the inner circle uh, who, who passed away. I think his name is Tom Rhodes. But, uh, yeah, Tom Rhodes from San Antonio. He's a good friend of mine, an excellent lawyer. Yep. Tom had come up with this unbelievable approach using uh, PowerPoint slides. Yeah, I've seen it. Story. I've seen it. It just blew me away. And so... What's interesting is to try to mash all those things together and find a way to combine them and into a better way of, of picking a jury. You know, we all kind of get so vertical in our own method. Uh, it, it really is, a, I think, been interesting to try to see if there's ways to combine some of these different approaches together. So after you, you, all these focus groups, me and the other guys sharing information, what did you do with that? Well, so then... Uh, you know, we were all we were all kind of put it in our pocket and decided to try to use it and maybe circle up again at some point in the future. But there was a there was a friend of mine. I went down to pick a jury. His partner's wife had gotten sick, and I went down. It was a Sunday night before, and uh, you know, we've all been there. But when time gets short, you're in the fog of war. I go into this conference room. It's a Sunday afternoon. I'm picking a jury for him the next day, and he's working on his opening. And there's the reptile book, and there's Friedman's Rules of the Road, and Mitnick's book and old files he had and he's asking me to look at his opening and it's written out in longhand on a yellow pad and he's still working on it I just thought to myself you know maybe there's a way that we could take some of these approaches and and try to come up with best practices in other words taking the best of these different brilliant minds the, the Keenans and the Mitnicks and the Friedmans and you know Jerry Spence and maybe put it in a format that we could agree on to be maybe a template that we could share with guys like my friends so that when you're in the fog war, you could take it out. And so we, we started working on that. And then we've been doing these monthly live events that we just call trial school. Where we're giving it away for free, but trying to put the secret sauce together and stealing the best ideas from all these great lawyers into something that's really usable. And, and what's been interesting is we've, I think we've come up with some, some really good stuff as, as a result of that exercise. Well, how did you put it together and how does it go? Well, it started with uh, uh, just, we were doing it locally, you know, Mitnick uh, and, and, and myself and some others, we'd meet once a month. We'd invite all the local folks in Orlando. Now, we'd, we'd invite some of the other folks, but you know, they were in other cities. And then uh, when, when there was some interest, I mean, for example, this was, I don't know, five or six months ago, Keith was speaking about asking for money and Keith's got a really great approach. 
And so we decided with the internet just to throw it up uh, and live stream it. And we made it so that you, know, you have to swear that you don't represent any insurance companies or any, uh, any corporations. But then you log in and you can watch it right from, from your desk. We'd also have these local watch parties. And we, we had a local group here in Orlando. We had 40 or 50 people. We'd come and have beers and talk about it afterwards. So it became a networking opportunity, but also where, you know, like, for example, uh, this week we've got Mel Orchard speaking on, uh, on, on voir dire, on jury selection, how he's used this mixed method. Uh, and is this live stream or people there live or are they watching it online? It's both. So we have probably about a dozen local watch groups. You know, we've got Dion Rassius with the Beasley firm up in Philadelphia, Pete Flowers in Chicago, um, you know, Purdue and Houston, and a bunch of others. And so, you know, we'll get together and like here in Orlando, we'll meet at our warehouse and we keep our junk vehicles. And we'll have usually hamburgers and beer and then we'll watch the live stream and then we'll talk about it afterwards. But if you can't make it to one of those, we make it where if you, you know, sign up and you want to see it, you can log in for free and watch the live stream. And how does somebody uh, sign up for that? Where do they go to find out about that? We've got, we've got a website. It's called trialschool.org. And you just go on there and sign up. It's all free. Uh, but you do have to swear that you don't represent any insurance companies. You don't do any defense work. And you got to give your bar number and swear under oath you won't share it. Uh, and that's been a little bit of the challenge. We had one of the guys that was watching this stuff early on start blabbing about it on one of the listservs. And, you know, there's a little sensitivity. You know, like when Mitnick's sharing some of his secret sauce. Sure. You know, he hadn't even written in the book. It's it's uh, There's a little bit of a, a need to make sure it's protected. So that's why we take that part real seriously. Okay. So as a result of doing these things and these focus groups, workshops, live streams, have you been able to take those techniques and things you've learned, apply them to their cases? And what I understand getting two of the top 100 verdicts, obviously I would expect that something you learned, you, you tried it out and it helped you. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, it, it, to me, it, you know, I'm, I'm sort of the, the, the low man on the totem pole, you know, trying to tap into these great lawyers. And, uh, hey, Rich. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can't hear you that well. Can you start over? Oh, Let's... sure. How's that? Is that better? Much better. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, so as the low man on the totem pole, I, I've been able to sort of tap into these great minds and these great methods, and it's really transformed the way I try cases. Um, you know, I, I had had some good results in the past, but last year since we started this stuff, I was able to take at least for me, and there were two wrongful death cases I tried last year, one in a real conservative area called Pasco County and you know, on Florida's West Coast, another uh, up in Gainesville, which is also somewhat conservative, and we got two, I think, at least for me, substantial verdicts. Top, one, two, top 100 verdicts, they definitely 25 million plus. Yeah. Substantial anywhere. So yeah. Let's, let's talk about the first case. The one yep. in, which one was tried first, the Gainesville one or the other? No, that was that was the one in Sumter, uh, or in Pasco County. It was so talk, what is that case? Tell us about it. Well, it was a case uh, against Ford Motor Company uh, where there was a recalled tire that had been sold by Sam's Club, uh, even though it had already been recalled and Sam's didn't catch it. And so church van rolling down the road, tread separation happens, rolls over, and uh, a woman died who was our client because she wasn't wearing her seatbelt. And those were the facts. And we had settled with Michelin and we had settled with Sam's Club. So we're just suing Ford Motor Company for having an unstable vehicle and uh, you know, of course, there's comparative fault here in Florida. Was this a big van, like a three fifth uh, Conoline type van? Yep, that's exactly what it was. And Used so, by many, many churches across the country. Yep, yep. And there have been a lot of those verdicts over the years. But the problem with our case was first, it was in a conservative jurisdiction, but it was all that comparative fault. And so. Um, it comparative was, fault on the seatbelt and the other parties? Yeah, well, against our client for the seatbelt, against Michelin for having a defective tire. And, and against guess. Sam's Club for not yanking it off the vehicle when they let it, you know, brought it in for servicing. And so all we had was Ford Motor Company. It's like, are you kidding? That case is ridiculous. There's, you know, 
we may have a little bit of fault, but come on. So they'd take their chances thinking, all right, we'll get a low number anyway. But so that was the case and uh, went in with a basically no offer case from Ford. Uh, I think they put a little money on it right before trial, but wouldn't even cover our costs at that point. And so that was the first one I was really able to, I think, try to take some of the stuff I'd learned from, you know, the Spence What was company. the key in your mind to getting liability against Ford and getting a significant amount of damages? I think it was the right verdict or the right jury rather be able to sort through the, the jury and, and exercise challenges for cause, but also have them not feel alienated where I felt like we were able to build a tribe. And that was a real challenge. The first, that was the first case where I really tried to do both of those. And so I think if anything, it was a two, two and a half day of voir dire. We went through almost 200 jurors. We ended up with maybe, you know, 20 of them that were left after all the challenges for cause. And I think we, we, you know, came home with a, with a jury that, that, you know, felt good about us, felt good about our case, uh, but obviously weren't haters. And, and I think at the end of the day, that's why we were able to, to, to come home with the verdict. There was also, I used a lot of Keith's stuff uh, that I had picked up through the trial school over the last couple of years. You know, some of Don Keenan's reptile stuff, you know, the, the Spence College stuff. And so that when we asked for the money, it was something that what didn't offend them that we had built up. Rick Freeman's Rules of the Road, taking all those pieces together and, and really kind of tapping into all those, those great, great minds and, and trying to come up with a format that seemed to, to be a, a multi-method or a you know, mixed method approach. I, I really think, though, have, had it not been for the truck, for all this, these, these last couple of years of, of workshops, I don't think that, that verdict would have been nearly what it was. So what about the, the trial in Gainesville? What was that case? Well, that one was probably three or four months after the Ford case. And that was a case where uh, our client was a college student who'd been drinking for her birthday till three in the morning, still had a bunch of alcohol in her system and had cocaine in her system. And it actually was uncontroverted, had bumped cocaine that morning and was going across the, uh, on her bicycle, riding, I don't know, 16, 17 miles an hour. And there's a dump truck that was turning right. She scoots up right next to him and juts out in the intersection in front of him and he runs her over and kills her. And so again, lots and lots of comparative fault. I think there was a small offer going into that case, but you know, the other side was rolling the dice that in Florida, if they can prove that there's 51% fault because of alcohol or cocaine, there's, you know, they get off scot-free. And so that was the case. And so, um, you know, came in and again, I think it was a result of the, the jury selection, all these other pieces from these great lawyers, I think that we had put together through the trial school workshops that resulted in another great verdict. All right, well, we're running out of time. Let me ask you something else. I, what do you like to do in your free time? <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I've I'm, seen I'm, all these pictures of this boat. <laughs> How did you see those? Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, uh, me and uh, our family loves to, loves the water. We are fortunate enough to live here in Florida and love to fish and dive and uh, anything around the water makes me happy. I mean, we were out yesterday with my daughter and her friends, and yeah, that's that's my happy place. Get, so get, like gets me out, out of the office. Thing and boating, huh? Yeah, yeah, we like to fish and dive and even kiteboard, believe it or not. That's uh, something fun we do together. Wow, fantastic. We need to get you, we need to get you every, every down here in Florida. I'd love to take you out. I'd love to go. I love fishing. I'd love to go down there and uh, check out your boat. It looks like a fishing boat to me. Oh, it is. It's, and it's, it's uh, designed to go fast. We go out to the other side of the Gulf Stream, about 120 miles out for tuna. That's, uh, that's a fun day. You can get out there. We go out there pretty fast fish we chase birds with radar and then put the lures in and hopefully catch some good tuna and have sushi for dinner so all right rich i appreciate you coming out and sharing some of the good cutting edge things you're doing some of the great results you're having and look forward to having you back 